evening. This is Anna Galactic bringing you another science presentation in our ongoing series into the new geometry of the sphere. And you may object right there. Oh my goodness. This is silly of us to even listen to you. The new geometry of the sphere, Sam? Oh my God. And then you'd be writing in polite letters because you're genteel and cultured people. But I'm just a youngster and you recognize that. And, and I just have gotten somehow out of control and I'm grandiose and I think I have an education when it's obvious I don't. And so the new geometry of the sphere, Sam? <laughs> no. Oh. And they're being so nice and so polite. Of all ages, it's just, it's just everyone's encroaching on you, and you start to feel smothered. <laughs> uh, because, obviously, they're not listening to you, and they don't give a fuck about your sphere, for Christ's sake, in hell. And for you to even talk like you have sphere on your mind, it... it is just a cultural and societal gaffe of the very cardinal most first order. And now they have to correct you because they love you. I love you. That's Kirk Douglas. <laughs> that was, that was Kirk Douglas talking to his wife that he called a whore when she wasn't and you know we the viewers knew she wasn't because we observed her very carefully where obviously Kirky boy didn't really get a chance as a really overworked cop an overworked good cop Kirk Douglas was a good cop in this movie but his wife not at all a whore actually the opposite of a whore she knew a guy before Kirk Douglas. And he found out about this. And he called her a whore. And it wasn't true. And then he got shot in the gut. Which is the worst way to die. And now he's down on the ground. Apologizing to his wife. Since he might as well now. And he says. Oh. Rob you. And that's the love that we scientists have for each other. I I can vouch for that. Well, I hope that explains some of my behavior lately. Obviously, I'm going through. This isn't supposed to be about me, scientists. Are not we don't but we're human and I could but it's really leaning on the audience another story about me because I'm talking to you and so I can get away with it and oh no not again but I did vow under the stars on Labor Day uh, officially uh, that is religiously and legally in my world is when I committed uh, I committed but to what to what did I commit to science to truth I, no I've I'm already committed to truth and and only science as I define it but truth always as I define it again which I'd better because Everyone else defines shit whatever way they feel like. But if I rely on rational logic, which I know the universe <laughs> says, then it doesn't matter what they feel. You know, they dance, oh, we don't like you. Well, I don't care because I am right I. It's really that bad with, with males. <laughs> now, angular frequency is really a horse of a different color 
And I'm reluctant to jump into this because it is deep. And we're going to talk about period and cycle and CPS, which is cycles per second. And then there's the value that's of critical importance called omega. And then there is the factor of 2 pi, which is either there or it's not, depending on the notational representational system. And that is very confusing right at the outset, but I hope by my stating what the actual confusion was, it might help you navigate through it. Because I have to navigate through this. You might not have to, but it doesn't hurt for you to know what I navigated through, that's for sure. When talking about a new number system, you really have to get cold and cruel. I do. This is how I, this is actually how I work, is in the cold, cruel darkness of just, just raw, just agonizingly s s direct, just absolutely straight in the eyes. Is it true or not? Does it work or not? That's called binary logic, actually. Very helpful because it eliminates a lot of emotional disturbances. Emotion, uh, emotion is different from rational logic because it uses a different basis system. It, ours is binary. Is it true or not? Is it true or not? It's actually kind of revolting. Science is disgusting. That's why nerds are hated and geeks are just despised. It's because this is really shit. Scientists are just assholes. I mean, you have to finally be honest. But then what we can say and prove it is you were assholes first. No, we, we might be assholes, and maybe we are, but you were assholes first. And we run to the teacher on the playground, is what this turns out to be the analogy of. And I'm not sure that's really helping the cause of science. I'm not sure I'm a really a philosopher. You know what I mean? I don't think I could draw a crowd. It's like, you know what? I'm going to debate. This is what used to be done like 300 years ago in the times of knights of armor and shit. Just knights of leather and knights of just old clothes. Just knights of nakedness. Knights of anything. But when men were men and could be and, and die for it and feel good. I, you know, this is how I was raised. So I'm just like kind of miming this, but it feels good. You know, maybe I am like an, a Viking. I'm actually descended from fucking Vikings. And sometimes I think I feel it. So I just feel like raping a coast or pillaging a village. And I, I just can't help it. I just feel I, I'm looking at the moon going, I think it's time to build a boat and get some men. Just start forging some spears so we can overcome the men on the coast that we land on. Just rape their women and steal their pigs. Just just live there for as long as we fucking feel like it. And then just leave as whenever we damn well please. And that, and that maybe that's me. And what would that make me? A very happy camper. My, my ancestors survived, baby. They may have been cannibals. They may have eaten each other. I have no idea. Nor could I care. They produced me, so they were obviously selected by God. Because God definitely intended for me to be born, and so I forgive anybody in my lineage. I don't care if you raped and pillaged and tore and stole and lied and cheated and crucified. Well, oh wait, well not, uh, yes, but in, except in the case of one man. Now, as long as you didn't kill the the guy who's going to come to save us all and heal the earth, well, then I don't care. I forgive you anything. 
You what? What do you mean? No. And then maybe there would be a problem. But thank God that never happened. The king came to the earth. The nation welcomed him. Israel just blew up in a carnival of excitement. The Romans were infected and gave up and just gave the entire area of Turkey and eastern Mediterranean just directly to the Israelis and withdrew. And Jesus ruled. At first he rode elephants into India and healed every fucking buddy. Then went up in Tibet, into Tibet with a thousand Indian people and healed all of Tibet. And they spread out and healed the Incas and the Aztecs and even got to the Europeans and saved the Vikings who would have been cannibals like my ancestors. And Jesus just took over the world and we lived in bliss forever after. Well, unfortunately, instead, the Israelis murdered. Uh, it's just a sad mistake. Instead of that happening, the king coming and restoring everything the way it should have been when it was great, they murdered the healer. Well, that can happen, I guess, once in a universe. Once in a universe, that might happen. But when it does, stick around for the tra uh, the uh, not the trailer, the denouement, the denouement, the follow up. When the drama is over and it looks like he lost and he left defeated, he can't come back because they'd murder him again, and so he's gone. But then one day he returns. That is written in the stars, my children. I learned that from none other than E.W. Bollinger. Bollinger, except he's an American, I found out, so it's Bollinger. <laughs> I think. I mean, I lost all my books in the campfire, so I can't actually consult my own notes, which is basically why I wrote the damn books because I'm like not exactly a polymath but in my limited field of gifting it sure goes a long way when you know inductive logic in this day and age inductive logic is the salvation of science but I'm not sure that fact has been recognized yet I am one of the only and apparently one of the last of the inductive synthetic scientists. A dying breed, and sadly, because your Jedi are shit compared to us. Alec Guinness, by the way, despised his role as Obi-Wan Kenobi, the greatest actor who has ever lived. Uh, although there's always, like, maybe among two or three. But Alec Guinness? All Americans know him as Obi-Wan Kenobi, and Alec picked up on that fact and really resented it. It's not that he doesn't like the American opinion is that he doesn't know actor wants to be thought of as one of his roles. I've heard countless, well, not countless, but a lot, a many, many actors say that. I, 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 it always startles me to hear them say that because it's so revealing. No actor or actress, well, I would assume an actress, I, I, I'm trying to think, but, um, yeah, um, well, mm, I, I can't think of a single actress, but that's totally random. But I can think of several actors that they don't want to be, they don't want to be identified with their character in a certain hit role, because, you see, they have careers ahead. They're not done fulfilling their dreams or making their tons of money. It's both, but it's okay. 
I don't judge them for that, but Hollywood, I mean, you got to admit, Hollywood, do they have a different set of morals in Hollywood? Do you suspect Hollywood? You think they, their morals are a little bit different from the norm? <laughs> I hope, I hope you know that the morals of Hollywood are definitely different from the norm. And therefore, Bill Cosby was illegally tried. And Pennsylvania finally realized that. And that's a United States jurisdiction authorized from the top. And Bill Cosby is a hero. I hope you'll join with me. Approaching my birthday. And on my birthday every year, on my birthday on October 14th, we'll all together as America celebrate Bill Cosby Day. I wish instead of my ashes to be done anything, I don't give a fuck what happens after I'm so cold dead. But as my last dying wish, my last wish to the world is that my birthday on October 14th be designated by the President of the United States as Bill Cosby Memorial Day. I mean, after Bill's dead, that's what it will be. But he's still alive, so just Bill Cosby Day while the guy's still kicking, for Christ's sake. He's in his 80s. My parents worshipped this man until the illegal charges were levied against him by a lesbian plant. And those are the actual facts. Bill Cosby was unquestionably um, guilty of at least 30, at least 30 assaults. But according to Hollywood, there's no sex involved. There are no sexual crimes in Hollywood. It's simple assault. And so he had a habit and should have been rehabilitated. And so I think Bill was served the right sentence. I think he deserved to go to prison for a year or two years or whatever it was. For I actually don't know how many years. But he was in prison, I believe into his 80s, and then he was released because, of course, the whole thing was trumped up. And trumped up now is in honor of our former president, whom you voted for. I certain the fuck Lee didn't. So don't blame me for your asshole decisions. Stupid ass voters. Fuck. <laughs> I look down on you and laugh and spit. Whenever I pass a Republican or a Democrat stand, like, oh, sign up here. <laughs> I just for I just want to kick it over and then just laugh in their faces. But of course instead I engage them in normal country ja gabber gab jabber <laughs> and joke around and, and we end up liking each other cuz they're just humans they don't give a fuck they they're just doing what they do I know that. But I just hate the fucking thing. You get to know the people. They're always good. Well, not always, but usually good. And the bad ones, you know, they're just... You gotta forgive. You gotta forgive. They literally don't know what they're doing, and Yeshua said that in the, under the most dire circumstances, so if he's willing to do that, I am too. They don't know what they're doing, okay? And that, you know, if a puppy doesn't know what it's doing, you don't beat it to death. You give it another chance to go on the paper or whatever it didn't know it was doing wrong. It didn't know. It didn't know. It did not know. You don't beat the goddamn puppy because God will strike his wrath down on you for that. He did so with Balaam. <laughs> he tried to beat his ass. I know in American that sounds funny. I like to leave it that way for that reason because I'm an American. And so, yeah, Balaam beat his ass. <laughs> I just think that's fucking hilarious. Because of what happened next, God came and said, you know, if you hadn't stopped beating that fucking donkey when I told you, I would have killed you and saved the donkey. <laughs> and this is a fucking prophet that God has selected. So imagine the dire circumstances that God was in at the time. He chooses this jackass I know it's a pun, but really, this guy, Balaam, not a good selection, but he must have been the best or God wouldn't have selected him. And this is what he got. He's beaten his own goddamn ass. 
Well, I find that kind of ironically hilarious. I, you know what I mean? I'm kind of Greek that way. Well, I was married to a Greek woman, a Greek girl when I met her, but she was a Greek woman by the time I was done with her. Well, I was an American man by the time she was done with me because she managed my finances. I was an absolute, I mean, there's no word for it. I, I told you, I, I, I hate money. And so imagine what my finances are always like when you hate money. And and this woman, I she wants me to marry her, and I, I want to get married, so I married her. It lasted 10 years of bliss. Last three weeks were dull, and the last three days were hmm, final. <laughs> but that's a brief, I mean, the rest was great. We loved each other. I mean, you know, as playmates, we were playmates. For 10 years, that's a pretty good run, you know, of constant just ecstasy. I mean, if that's what you like, which I do. <laughs> and so Greek is okay to me. She was 100% Greek. I met both of her parents, of course, and they're both... Well, I met her grandfather, who always called me boy. And I thought, you know, this this is an old... this. I know what this is. I recognize this guy. He He doesn't like me, and he's right. He's right not to like me. He doesn't, it's not that he doesn't, he wants to like me, but he can't. And I can't help him because he doesn't speak a goddamn word of English. And I don't speak a goddamn word of Greek, except Koinos Greek from like Revelation, which I claim makes me a Greek scholar, but I think that's a little exaggerated, don't you? Memorize a couple of verses and learn the alphabet and pronunciation. That doesn't make you a goddamn Greek scholar. But if you're looking for attention, it might. <laughs> like, you need credentials maybe to, like, bluff your way in. Just, well, are you from Stanford? Like, you keep talking about Stanford. I, well, I used to ride my bicycle there. You don't want to say bicycle then. That's just a turn-off word in that scenario. You rode your bicycle to Stanford. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So what credentials do you have? Um, I almost got an AA degree, and then there's a story, and then and then they're getting tired because stories is just no, no stories are welcome right now. But I do because I'm friendly. I told you I don't care about the situation. I want to have fun, and and that sometimes is inappropriate. <laughs> It just is. I mean, even if they laugh, you slit your throat. You, you didn't know what you're doing. You just fucked yourself in the ass. Which brings us back to the main point. And I am an American, so I'm allowed to say that filthy, dirty, which I detest, but being an American, kind of proud of it too. It's like, of all the peoples of the earth and their dirty language, uh, you come to America, you're going to know what... Uh, your ancestors just didn't about fucking filthy language. Oh, we're all about assholes. It just starts there. Uh, we just go on anus, it, but just anything down there. And that's where the balls are all into the balls. It is anything. Scat, scatological, well, anus. I mean, they're kind of related, but oh, we take it all the way. Have you ever heard of a <laughs> Have you ever heard of a Cleveland steamer? <laughs> I learned this from a Scottish immigrant. <laughs> I had to look it up because I didn't know what he was saying. I'm not sure half the audience did after I looked it up in Urban Dictionary. For Christ's sake, Greg. The fuck did you just say? Just to say it, I now oh, I know I hypocrite. I gotta get some water. I'll be right back.
Uh, <sighs> and now for something completely different. We return your broadcast to you. Had this been a real emergency, Ah, yes, the good old days, the good old days of yore when thermonuclear destruction loomed over our brows. Mamma mia, we didn't know what desk made of plywood or otherwise to duck under when the thermonuclears began to rain. <laughs> we'd hear the bell and dive, that's all we knew, or we'd get shattered glass in our eyes was the major concern from a thermonuclear detonation over the, our city. which I finally got to a chance to observe in an excellent animation and nothing other than Terminator 2, which I think we should watch, don't you? And so that is coming up on 30 minutes. you notice I'm trying consciously to modulate my voice, and if I simulate even a pseudo-British accent, it tends to slow me down and make me legible, um, comprehensible. <laughs> So, that's all I wanted to say for tonight. I'm uh, going to be broadcasting more about angular frequency once I've mastered it. Because I want to give you precise definitions, particularly of the period and the cycle, which I, fi I found to be confusing, and I want to make sure you do not find it so. You may not actually need this information. I'm not critically sure I needed all of this information, but I am on a discovery vector and attempting to probe the limits of what we know. And so to get definitions is absolutely essential to me. The definition of angular anything is notoriously abstruse. To get a straight answer, when you hear the word angular, you learn that you're in trouble. And one of the ways out of it is to get into a box with a certain interpretation that's fixed. And they all are. It's just a question of which one you end up with. You really never need to know the others. But what I've discovered is in this confusion is, is the germ of discovery. That the fact that we have so much trouble with the circle has to be traced by a rational man to some kind of structural difficulty. It is the relationship between the straight line and the curved line, which in this case is the perfect curved line, the circle. The analog of the sphere But it is a different space. By definition, it's not one. By definition, it's not one line. What it is by an interesting composition is the integration of two lines. That you can compute the circle to the limit of the degree of accuracy of linear algebra. And what it turns out to boil down to is the limit on a quadratic inverse. And this is an inherent limitation of linear space. When it's called quadratic space, all that means is two lines. Quadratic means two lines instead of one. So a lot of this is called by the term quadratic, but all it means is linear, as opposed to curved. What we're trying to reach is the curved line. No curve is rational from a linear aspect. We've proved that, in fact, the Greeks knew it. They discovered the ratio uh, to a certain approximation, but they couldn't figure it out and they kind of knew why. Is the relationship of the straight line with which you are trying to measure. It is literally your yardstick for distance. But now the what you're trying to measure is not going straight. It's not going straight at all. 
But with sine and cosine, you can use x and y to extract two numbers that represent the circle. And these cannot be exact. There's simply a distribution. It's actually a proportional relationship on an irrational number. And sine and cosine are proportional quantities. They are multiplicative. Sine and cosine are multiplicative operations. But unfortunately, their results are not rational. And in geometry, they have to be. Geometry does not work with irrational numbers. Remember that. Geometry only deals with proportional numbers. Only with proportional numbers. The complications that arise in doing that, exemplified in gimbal lock, is not due it it's not due to an inherent weakness in the algebra or mathematics of the space that's very important i think to understand that linear algebra and linear mathematics the number system that we use which is the line they are the same thing is absolutely real it's absolute no less real than what i'm describing with a sphere that's extremely important to understand. The problem only comes when trying to address circular function. Anything that's curved is not a 1D composition because it's not straight. It's not straight. And so we call that a 2D figure because it's the easiest way for us to get at it is with two lines. And that's sine and cosine. And those are irrational. So they're not geometric. That's extremely critical to recognize is that sine and cosine are never rational. They're inherently irrational. But they're proportional. And so we can simulate multiplicative proportional space. But only with calculus. And the reason why is only, it, it, it may not be exactly calculus. It's a certain transcendental function. And calculus is the most famous example of that. But, but actually, if you analyze sine and cosine, they're transcendental functions. And that is, is, a, is a commonality a certain characteristics, a certain characteristic that very closely matches a characteristic of the calculus procedure. The calculus procedure involves throwing a piece out. I, I think you may remember that from your training in calculus. There comes this point where you realize you're throwing something out. On the derivative, you explicitly discard any scalar. Um, that's fine because you have to know what you're doing when you do that, but you can get away with it because you're trying to simulate geometry. You're trying to make that number as rational as you know it should be. So essentially you're right in doing that. The problem is you can't do it. You can't rationalize it. It can't be done. And so you have to settle for precision. And, I, and, and that just, you, there is no such thing as precision in geometry. Let me say that again. There is no such thing as rounding off in geometry. There is no remainder. There is no possibility of using a derivative for that reason. And therefore, the only solution to this irrationality, if you think you need to get around it, if you think you can't live with this irration irrationality anymore, then you only have one hope. And that's for an integral number system. That is what I discovered, is the integral number system.
it just so happens that its spherical object corresponding to the line which it replaces, the sphere replaces the line. And when it does, things happen that are so miraculous that words fail. So it's not just the discovery of a new number system in itself with miraculous potential. I'll just put it that way. Pretend that I didn't discover anything after this. It, enormous potential. A new number space that's never been proposed. And it's simply the step up, up from the line which is add to the sphere which is multiply. And that's very close to the truth. It is multiply, and that is true. What I said is true, but it's not enough. It's actually simpler. It's reciprocity, a specifically limited definition of how the, the terms of, of the multipliers. The multipliers are restricted to simpler numbers than just any N over M. Because in the N over M, one of those two numbers has to be one. And that means that in the other part of the two component number, if this one was in the numerator, then this one is in the denominator. And that makes like, for instance, two over one, one over two. Those two numbers multiply to one. And if you geometricize the sphere as a surface, which you're allowed to do here because it encloses space, the line does not, so the line has no option to do this. The sphere does. That's the extra degree of freedom that we achieve by stepping up to integral space. This is the space the universe uses, is spherical, it's not linear. A critical difference. It does not affect what happened here on Earth with the effects of technology. That's all valid and good because of the effects of calculus. But calculus does not even enter in into the 2D system. Or I used to call it 2D, it's 2P, because it's proportional. The two components are proportional, 1 half and 2 over 1. They multiply to 1, but the next one, what's the next one? Do you know? This is your test question. If you get this, you get the quantum prize. After 2, after 2, we'll call, we'll call 2 over 1, 1 over 2, we'll call that 2. What's the next number? 3, that's right. What's in between those? What's in between them? What's in between two and three? One good answer, an excellent answer, a genius answer would be the same thing that's between one and two. He's nothing. These are quantum leaps. These are quantum leaps of space going out. But if you say that, they're quantum leaps of time going in. And those are the two component numbers. And that's where time lives. In order to get that D-linear, uh, one half is not very helpful. That's to, to the proportion that space is two and not one, then time is one half, not one. That's not very helpful, but it's a start. What we're lacking is motion. This is the static sphere, which geometry is static. But when you add motion to the sphere, you see you can't do that to the line. The line does not allow the addition of anything because it's a one component number. But here we already have space, but now we can add time. And that obviously is the key to Einstein's insight, is here is where time meets space. It's in the spherical geometry. On the addition of energy, you get time. The entry of time to space is with energy because energy is defined as motion. I think you know that. And motion cannot be defined without a time component. Distance can be, but not motion. Motion, you need time. So motion on the sphere is angular momentum, and there is that word angular. And that is the difficult word because it's been defined using linearization methods. I'm now going to show you what it actually means in its original space, which is spherical. But to get that, you'll need to understand it in its somewhat derivative space, the circle. But the circle absolutely represents the sphere. Because it has motion on it, 
It has all the data of the sphere on the ring, as I call it. The nodes will be where time is. And the nodes are the nodes of frequency. The counting numbers in 2P space. Frequency will be the spherical shells of space going out, which will define the flight of the photon in a way that if it doesn't blow your socks off, you need maybe need to take some acid. We'll be back.